Hello, Facebook Live. Marcus here. What's happening, everybody? It is Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon. A lot of times, time's flying, um, or I'm losing track of, of the days. Um, so it is Tuesday afternoon. Busy day today. Uh, as always, Jamie and I are rocking and rolling every day, working harder than ever, um, trying to adapt and keep moving forward, keep the restaurant rocking and rolling and, and going. So, um, part of that strategy is for us to be live every single day on Facebook and educating you, talking to you, making you hungry, um, and getting you really healthy, delicious, cool foods and educating you on those foods at the same time. So, um, if you are tuning in live, drop a comment, hashtag live. Jordan already did that. Hello, Jordan. Hello, Ralph. A few other people are on right now. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the avocado today. Avocados are back in stock here at Aroma Time. Um, we got uh, them back. We don't, we don't typically buy avocados that much at the restaurant. However, when we get a California avocado, we sure do. Um, California avocados being in my opinion, um, the best avocado for sustainability purposes. Uh, you have callo you, you avocados grow all over, right? You can get avocados from Florida. There's not that really big of a commercial crop down there that says, oh, let's buy Florida avocados and package them and ship them to New York. Um, it's more small scale production. So avocados do grow a lot of places around the globe, but Mexico in particular has cornered the market with avocados. Their avocados, they have good marketing too as far as the dollars that go into uh, uh, advertising that the Mexican avocado. Uh, there's also a predominant region in uh, Chile that grows avocados, which I've warned people about using, not using Chilean avocados. And then I talk about American avocados, how American avocados are the um, best avocado to use when it comes to sustainability. See, avocado is a very intensive water crop. And I'm going to talk more about other things than avocados right now. I'm going to talk about also storing avocado, does throwing the pit into guacamole, make it, uh, make it last longer. How do you make an avocado from stop browning? I'm going to talk about all things like that too. So that's why this is Avocado 101. So if you've heard my spiel on, this, on, on where avocados, where I like avocados to be sourced from, then it's a little repetitive, but I am going to cover more than, than I normally cover on the avocado. So I just want to um, go onto my Facebook page here and just um, share the video. So I'm just going to turn away for a quick moment here and share this in another group. Um, so it's a beautiful day out. I am heading, getting ready to, um, to, uh, to go for a bike ride here soon. Um, Jamie and I had a funeral this morning, unfortunately. Her grandfather, who was 95, had passed away two days ago. Um, so uh, I'm back doing a little work and then heading out on my bike. Let me get 15 or 20 miles and see what happens. It's beautiful out there. So avocados. So um, the American avocado, or so the, the avocado in general, has, the, has a very large water consumption. So they have to come in and deforest and rob water supplies or, or dig deep down and tap into water supplies that sometimes interfere with the local villages, especially in Chile. This is, this is how they do this. And these are big companies. They don't care. They're not small family owned farms do this. These are big companies that come in and deforest, plant thousands of av avocado trees and then start taking the water away from the villages. Literally people's farmland dries up. Uh, their water supply dries up. They have to get water tanked in. Um, Mexico, um, it's not quite as bad as Chile. So if you were going to say, well, G. Marcus, I can't find an American avocado, what would I eat? Then you would eat, um, so if you could grade the avocados like one, two, and three, best, okay, and avoid, you'd be American is the best, then Mexico, and then totally avoid the Chilean avocado. Okay, so that's how it goes. So anytime you can pick an American avocado here, folks, it's much, much, much better as far as the sustainability. The avocado in general just, just takes lots of water to grow. We can't change that. But it's how they come in and they treat the locals, how they treat the land, the density and things like that that matter. And California um, is going to have the best standards for that. So I got in three cases today of California avocados. I've been ordering them all week. The delivery truck gets here and the driver knows. He goes, Marcus... They gave you Cal uh, Mexican again. They gave you Mexican avocados again. 
um, the reason I'm so strict right now is because I know that American avocados are in season until June, July. That's when the season will end, sort of end. Right now they're in their peak. So I know that the avocado is out there from America. It exists. So we keep ordering avocados. It says on the, uh, on, when I go on to order on the computer, you know, it says California. Or it actually just, just gives it a label. And sometimes they're California, sometimes they're, they're Mexican. Most times they're Mexican. The driver goes, Marcus, I made sure today that you got the California. So he goes, I went through the order before I left the warehouse and I wanted to make sure that you were getting California avocados. He goes, so I had to say, hey guys, he keeps sending these back because he wants the California stuff. Do we have California stuff in the warehouse? And sure enough, there was um, some Californias. So um, we have three cases of California avocados in. They won't last long. We went through three cases last week like that of, of California avocados. These ones are not ripe. Last week's avocados were ripe. These are not ripe. So I'm gonna talk about storing an avocado, how to store it, how to store it after you cut it and things like that, super important. Because you can stock up on avocados. You can even freeze avocados to um, enjoy avocados year round. So if you want to be a super fanatic about saying, I'm only gonna do California avocados or only organic avocados or whatever, um, you buy stock up and you can freeze them and I'll talk to you about doing that. So these avocados are hard avocados. You take these home. If you want to ripen them, you leave them out. You leave them out at room temperature. Three days, these will start being um, um, edible. These will start staying soft. In three days, if you had six avocados in your can, you say, man, I never, I'm never gonna eat six avocados in the next two days. You take those avocados, they're starting to soften and then put them into the refrigerator. That will buy you another three to five days, four to five days, really. That will buy you that much longer, so the avocado is now cold. Now, incidentally, when you make guacamole, I heard that, I guess cold avocados make the best guacamole. For some reason, somebody told me that um, at some point. I'm not sure how true that is, um, but that's what they, if anybody knows, if anybody knows any, any, anything like that, just drop a comment, because uh, I'm not sure. But I heard, I did hear that it does make a difference. I always thought that warmer avocados were better, um, but somebody told me, no, no, cold, cold avocados make better guacamole, and I don't know why. So, you want to stop the avocado from ripening, you put it into the refrigerator. If you come to us or anywhere and buy a dozen avocados and say, well, let me, I could never eat a dozen, you know, within a certain amount of time, you would simply put nine in the refrigerator, three on your counter. And then in three days, you're going to have two to three days, four days worth of avocados on your counter. And what you do is as you take one avocado and eat it, you bring one out of the refrigerator and put it onto the counter. So you always have every day on a three day rotation, every single day, a new avocado coming on the counter and eating an, eating an avocado, all right? If you forget to eat an avocado for a day, you stick it in the refrigerator and you'll get three to four more, five more days out of it. So you see how that works? So bring these home, stock up on them, put them in the refrigerator, only the ones out at room temperature that you're planning on eating in the next three to five days. And then you just keep that rotation. Now let's say you want to freeze them. You take the as avocados that are on the right, more on the ripe side, they have them on the ripe side, not brown, but on the ripe side. Cut them open, take the seed out, scoop it out, and you mash, you mash up the avocado. And you squeeze a little lemon on it. Squeezing a little lemon or citrus or lime has ascorbic acid, it has vitamin C. That is a natural way to prevent um, the oxidative enzymes. So the enzymes don't oxidate. Um, oxidate means they just simply get exposed, the enzymes get exposed to oxygen and they start turning brown. If you cut it off of its oxygen supply, like to put it into water, like if you cut an apple and it starts browning, if you cut two apples and one was browning, one wasn't, you put the one, the one that wouldn't be browning was the one you would drop in the water, right? So you cut two apples, drop one in water, keep one in room, uh, uh, um, not, not covered up or anything. The one that goes in the water is not going to brown like the one that's not going into water. Because once you create a protective shell of oxygen, it won't oxidize. Now, you can also do that by adding ascorbic acid. It helps preserve it. Ascorbic acid, vitamin C, is a preservative measure for things. So mash up the avocado in a bowl with a fork. Mash it up. Squeeze lemon or lime on it. And then put it into a Ziploc bag. Squeeze the air out and seal it and put it into the freezer. You can do one avocado per bag. You can do five or six avocados per bag. Whatever you want to do, um, two to three, however you want to make your recipes and make your guacamole. And from there, you simply pull it out of the freezer, op uh, thaw it out for a few hours, open it up, remash it, and make guacamole. Incidentally, a lot of restaurants use frozen avocado 
pulp puree or even frozen halved avocados. A lot of restaurants do that. Now the restaurants that make guacamole in front of you and they, they don't open the avocado, they're not. But there's a lot of restaurants because it's, you don't have to play the ripening game. You don't have to put them in the refrigerator, pull them out, this and that, and once they start browning, you lose them, you waste a lot of money. You buy somebody, buy these pouches of avocado pulp puree or halved avocados. You thaw them, they already come with ascorbic acid in it, and that's how you make guacamole. A lot of Mexican restaurants, a lot of restaurants that do this, especially the chain restaurants, that's what they do. The larger volume number restaurant, larger volume restaurants, that's what they do. That's an industry standard, folks, is, is, is um, avocado, um, avocado, uh, uh, frozen avocado in restaurants. So you do the same exact thing at home. You buy avocados ahead of time, because they're on sale, or you can get American avocados, and you freeze them. Now let's say you cut an avocado, and you only use half now, and you're gonna use half later, all right? What you'd wanna do is the same thing, take a squeeze of lemon juice, squeeze it on the half that you're not using, and make sure it covers the surface of it. You can also, reinforce that with a layer of plastic wrap and push the plastic wrap on it so it, it touches and, um, and creates another air barrier, an oxygen barrier, so nothing gets into it. So that was how you would keep that for later in the day or tomorrow, put it into the refrigerator if you're gonna keep it late past, past that day, that's how I would do it. Um, you know you can make avocado, quote unquote, avocado fries. You can take avocados, slice them, um, chop up some almond flour, season it, dredge them in almond flour and pop them in the dehydrator for like 100 and 120 degrees overnight. And you'd have these like awesome, chewy, crispy, quote unquote, avocado fries or dehydrated avocado chips. They are amazing, by the way. You make them thicker so they actually like, have a chew to them. They are, they're amazing. I haven't made those in years, but they're really, really good. If I don't sell all these avocados, I think that's what I'll be doing with some of them. Um, Jamie was a little nervous that I bought three cases of avocados because they're not cheap. So I'm counting on everybody to help me out and bail me out of the avocado dilemma that I got myself into today. And uh, they are two for a dollar. Um, they are California avocados, not Mexican, and definitely not Chilean. Not saying that, you know, not saying that I wouldn't consume a Mexican avocado at some point. Um, if I really wanted an avocado and Americans are out of season, then yes, Mexican is the next choice. Like I said, one, two, or three. Chilean being um, the worst, so Chileans are totally avoid. A Mexican avocado is in the middle ground and the American avocado would be the best. So, um, you know, that's how I, that, 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 that's how that's set up. So now, what if you make guacamole and you want to store it for later? What do you do? Some people say throw the avocado pit in because the avocado pit will help preserve it and make it so it doesn't turn brown. There is zero protective properties in that avocado pit to stop oxidation. There are, however, a lot of nutrients in that avocado pit that are very valuable to consume. And some hardcore um, juicer and smoothie fanatics out there will throw those pits right into their blender and, and grind the pit of their avocado into their smoothie, into their green smoothie and drink that. I, I did that for years. Um, there's a lot of properties there. You put it into a, 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 um, a Vita Prep. Uh, Vitamix machine and you top it in throw it in there and you zap it right in you smooth it in tons and tons of fiber Lots of really cool nutrients in there lots of cool stuff So the avocado has that the pit has that but the pit will not stop your guacamole from turning brown There's no protective properties in there. What will stop your guacamole from turning brown or oxidizing is Lack of oxygen you have to suffocate it as well as putting in the citric acid, the ascorbic acid, the vitamin C, the, you got, I even take, I would even take vitamin C powder at certain points and just do straight sort of powder in certain things to preserve them. Um, but back to the guacamole, you obviously add lemon or lime juice. So, um, lemon or lime juice, then you, um, would take a protective lid, you put it into a bowl, uh, a plastic thing with a lid preferably and that lid, that lid that could snap on a lot, not air in it. But then what you do is you would put a piece of plastic and drape it over in there and push it down where it touches the guacamole. And then you would take the, the plastic container that you have this in, all right, hopefully plastic container, and you take it and you would hit the, hit the table so you can settle everything going down in the avocado. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, um, in the guacamole. So you get rid of the air gaps, just like that. You know how you settle things and you'll see it settle down and air, air, pop will pop, air pop, pockets will pop. And then you take this piece of plastic wrap and you just push it down on it and make it touch it. And then you put another closable lid on it 
and put that away. And that'll last a good day or so, easily last a good day. But if you don't have it airtight and covered, you will lose the protective qualities and will start oxidizing on you. Now, if that happens, you can simply take a spoon and scrape off that top layer. Don't throw the whole thing out. Take off, scrape off the top layer, and then resume eating your guacamole or your mashed avocado, however, you're, however, whatever it is, whether it's mashed or, or guacamole. And that's how you would do that. Um, so we talked about freezing an avocado. We talked about storing an avocado, how to ripen it, how to, how to uh, um, ripen it at room temperature, and then how to put it back in the refrigerator and rotate them so they last longer. We talked about how to freeze them, mash them, a little ascorbic acid, uh, lemon juice or something, freeze them, put them, put them in baggies. Um, so, um, and then we talked about guacamole and um, how to preserve your guacamole and we talked about the pit and we also talked about how a lot of restaurants use frozen pulp avocado in there. Think about it. If you could just buy a half a case of avocados today and say, okay, I'm gonna buy 40, 30 avocados. I'm gonna ripen them, I'm gonna take a half an hour out of my day and once they're ripe and I'm going to, to cut them, mash them, each one, and put them into a pouch, Ziploc them, put them into the freezer. And then for the next two months, three months, if you add an avocado every a third day, you would have, you could pull one out of the freezer every three days and make guacamole. People love guacamole, but the thing people do not like is trying to buy this in the store, ripen it, have the patience, and then making everything right to order then in there. But if you had the pulp ready to go, all you'd have to do is just freshen it up with a little lime or lemon, chop, chop cilantro, a little tomato, a little bit of red onion, and a little bit of salt, and you're there. There's your guacamole, what we call on the fly. In the restaurant industry, there's a term called on the fly, which means quickly. There's your, there's your, there's your guacamole on the fly. Pull it out of the freezer and you're good to go. And again, most, a lot of restaurants do that. You'd be surprised. I bought avocado pulp too in the past when I've had to do larger things with avocados. It makes it easier. Um, it's pretty much brainless. So people are saying that they want avocados. Um, um, Ralph is saying definitely want 10. All right, Ralph, awesome. Ralph wants 10. Allison, 10. Um, yep, two for a dollar there. These ones are two for a dollar. These California ones, two for a dollar. So people are saying they want, so cool. So that should help me get rid of a lot right there. That's 20 avocados. All right, folks, um, let's talk about some other cool things that we have in. Romanesco. Romanesco is back. This Romanesco cauliflower, it is back in stock. This is cool looking cauliflower. Um, Romanesco, it's a, like an heirloom uh, varietal of, of cauliflower. Uh, just something a little bit different than regular cauliflower. People have been asking us, people love our tuna. Today's Tuna Tuesday, by the way. Tuna entrees are $19.99 tonight. A really insane price for tuna. People, are all, people have also asked me, Marcus, that tuna that you buy, can we make tuna fish salad out of it? And the answer is yes. So if you bought that tuna from me for $18 a pound, I think is what it is, $18 a pound, and you bought it and you cooked it very slowly in water and then you crumbled it, you would have, you would have tuna fish ready to go at $18 a pound. Or we now have Wild Planet pole caught, line caught albacore tuna from the Pacific Northwest in a big pouch. There's 43 ounces here. So there's two and a half pounds here, two and a half pounds for $35, which is a considerable savings if you were to buy the fresh tuna. So that makes a big difference. Um, Non-GMO certified, Wild Planet, Polcott, uh, product of the USA. So um, this is really cool. Wild Planet makes a lot of amazing, amazing products. Um, so that's the story with that. Um, these are here, $35, they are in stock now. They come in pouches like this. This is, folks, this is canned tuna fish. This is canned tuna. This is not skipjack, this isn't tongue, this isn't any other stuff. This is albacore, pole caught, line caught. That's another term for line caught, is pole caught. That is what that is. Um, so sustainably pole and line caught, 100% pure tuna and sea salt. There's no funky chemicals in here. Um, so this is the real deal, 43 ounces. Um, so this is awesome stuff. This is what you make your tuna fish sandwiches out of, right here. Um, you can freeze this too, by the way. If you're not using it all, you can freeze it. But if you have a family, if you have a family of five, six people, four people, three people, I mean, if you want to eat tuna, if you want to make, devote the week to tuna fish sandwiches and stuff like that, this is what you do. You buy this pouch, 35 bucks, um, 
and you make tuna fish out of this. By the way, when you make tuna fish, the best tuna fish salad, the smaller you can get the tuna fish flakes, the better the tuna fish salad. And I recommend putting on gloves and taking each tuna, fish piece, and rubbing it between your hands. Don't fork, don't, don't put it with a fork or mash it. Take gloves, put the tuna in there, rub it between until it starts crumbling and flaking. The more it crumbles and flakes, the more lemon juice, the more seasoning, and the more mayonnaise you can get absorbed in, which means moistness and flavor, all right? And so you know how certain tuna fish uh, is like, oh wow, like this is so soft, and that's what they're doing. They're crumbling up to a smaller particle. Larger particles are not gonna be able to absorb as much. If you don't like as much mayo, don't put as much mayo in, but you can still do other things in there to be able to get this nice and soft and flaky tuna. You just cut down on the mayo, basically. Um, that's how you get really awesome tuna fish salads, smaller, smaller particles, all right? So this, is, this, this tuna fish is going to be your most sustainable. This has, again, the tuna that we use, the pole caught, line caught tuna from the Pacific Northwest, has the least amount of mercury out of any tuna out there. It is the safest tuna by far. They're small 25 pound fish, which means they're old enough to reproduce and they do reproduce, but they're not old enough or large enough to buy like those large tunas they get in the sushi restaurants and, and when they're putting them in the canned tuna. Those are all commercially net caught. All that canned tuna stuff is commercially net caught and long line caught. They're getting long, big fish on there. You can't, when, when those guys go out with one hook and one line, yeah, they're catching some of those big blue fins, but realistically, a 25 pound fish is easy to reel in and reel out, right? Those, and 25 pound fish is gonna give you a lot of, a lot of fight, right? So that's e much easier. Um, it's much easier when you're going in to catch tuna fish, canned tuna fish, just to go in there and just net everything, line lawn catch everything, hydraulically lift it back up on the dock, and that's what's going into your tuna fish cans, is all that bigger commercially caught stuff, Older, larger, more mercury. It bioconcentrates from as a fish grows older and eats other fish. It keeps bioconcentrates. That's how come tuna has a bad rap for mercury. So if you eat tuna and you're concerned about mercury, the only tuna to eat is going to be pole caught small albacore tuna. And you would never, there was not as pole caught line caught, because you would never net fish like this. You would never like, um, long line fish like this because when you're doing doing they're doing nets and long line they want to get big fish they want to get big landings big 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 catches this these are just small 25 pounders one hook one line one hook one line they go out there and they they, they hook these things all day for months while it's in season for six six or so weeks um, this fish is only in season six or eight weeks in the summertime um, on the Pacific Northwest and so the boat literally goes out for that whole time they catch and they process typically um, right on the boat. They process a lot, especially the frozen stuff. gets frozen right on the boat, right then and there with the hours of catching it. So it's super, super fresh when it's frozen. All right, folks. So avocados are in, Romanesco's in, tuna's in, more buffalo mozzarella's in from Italy, buffalo milk mozzarella. We buy from a third generation producer in Southern Italy that was the found, they founded the commercial industry of buffalo milk mozzarella back after World War II. It's in its third generation, the family. Uh, business uh, and it's an awesome, awesome product. It's sent frozen to us. They make it and they freeze it there and it gets sent frozen so when we thought it's super fresh again. So I'm just looking around to see what else. Walnuts, a fresh batch of walnuts in today. Organically steam processed, all right, or pasteurized. Folks, you don't, a lot of us don't realize it, but a lot of the nuts we buy, almonds, walnuts, a lot of these nuts are pasteurized. And a lot of them are pasteurized with chemicals. They do chemical pasteurization, a lot of this stuff, because there could be a risk of salmonella or something um, to infect these almonds or whatever, um, E. coli, because that, who knows? There's something. There's something, there's something along the way that in California and a lot, a lot of regions, they've convinced the governments that, hey, you need to spray harmful chemicals and this stuff when you're processing it so nothing gets cross-contaminated. Well, instead of spraying chemicals, you can steam pasteurize things as well. So when you see, when you see that um, um, almonds, raw, quote unquote raw almonds, those are not raw. They're heated and they're chemically pasteurized, all right? So um, the walnuts that we get in and the only walnuts we've ever used have been steam pasteurized, no funky chemicals. They're called organically steam pasteurized almonds. They just flash them really quick with some steam 
to heat up the temperature and kill anything that's living on the outside shell or the outside or the outside part of the nut once they're processed. So that's how that is. So look for steam, steam process, or if you're buying, if you want like really raw almonds, you'd have to get them from Spain or Italy would be the place to buy a truly raw, unpasteurized, raw, unheated almond. That, that would be the way to go. So those came in today. Some pineapples that came in today. I have a family that said, hey, we, wanna, we want about six pineapples. So I got a couple cases of pineapples today. Um, more jovial brown rice pasta came in today. Today, the penne came in. Um, lots of organic milk came in today. I'm just looking around and there were orders like orders like crazy. More scallops today, more shrimp today, more calamari today. This tuna came in today. On the emails we're sending out, the last three days of emails that we're sending out, if you live in, an, if you live in certain areas and you want us to deliver to you, we're going to start setting up delivery routes as long as we can get several deliveries on the same route. We only want to do about 10 people maximum in one day, 8 to 10. We're going to start off with like 6 to 6 or so. We don't want to max us out and, 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 and overpromise. We want to be able to deliver to you in Kingston, Woodstock, that area, New Pulse, Gardner, Newburgh, Middletown, Goshen, Monroe, right, and then northern New Jersey. So oh, and this is our another organic order pulling in now. We have our, our, our big organic order coming in now, a lot more stuff. Raisins. We got a 30-pounder of raisins. We're going to package those down into one-pounders at a really good price, organic uh, raisins. So those will be in... Um, Chris is saying your avocados make the best guacamole. Yes, Chris. Awesome. 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 Um, so, uh, Ralph wants to know the best time to call. Ralph, the best time to call is, um, let's see, Jamie, if you're listening, if Jamie's on, Jamie's not with me right now. Jamie, if you're on, which I think, see you are, just drop a, drop a comment of the best time for them to start calling the place orders. Um, now that UNFI is here, I'm going to uh, check in their order in a couple minutes and then go on my, my bike ride um, and get that out of the way. Let's see. There was something else I wanted to talk about that was super important before I, before I log off. And I'm not sure I can remember. Let me just look around and see if I can spark up uh, my memory. Um, hmm. I was talking about deliveries. I was talking, we were talking about a lot of avocados. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I will maybe have... Oh, deliveries. So our last three emails... I've had delivery routes in there. Open up the email, click the route that would pertain to you. Don't click another route, because it's gonna throw off our numbers, it's a survey. Once you click something, it surveys you. If you click all four, it's gonna tag you from Ellenville. Know you're from Ellenville, but you're clicking all four of these areas. I know you don't live in Northern New Jersey, I know you don't live in Woodstock, and you're clicking all those. That, that throws off, that throws us off, and it will not help us get better quality food into people. Um, so, um, um, we're trying to get high quality food, this organic, local, all this kind of stuff um, at a good price. So now we're trying to make the delivery, so that will help us. Um, unfortunately, bread alone, we have no order today from bread alone again. Um, bread alone, um, I know a lot of businesses are stressed. Uh, bread alone has consistently in the last eight weeks probably messed up 80% of our orders to a point where we don't even have an order today. Um, they're taking our orders, they're cutting them by half, cutting them down by 75%. Um, and then they're saying, though, you know, we're, we're just, we can't deliver to you other days. And this was an interesting story last week. We got, you know, we told the, one of the salespeople from Bread Alone, like, I mean, this is, this is getting ridiculous. This is like getting really, really ridiculous. So, um, Jamie, if the UNFI client calls, just tell them I'll be right out. Um, so it's just getting really, really ridiculous where they're just shorting our orders like crazy. And today, zero, nothing came in. Nothing came in our order, and they're like, well, you don't have an order. We have, we have a standing order with them. And Jamie said to him last week, well, can we get a special delivery? I'll come pick it up. And um, they go, no, we're only in Ellenville on Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays, we're only in Ellenville on Fridays. So um, Thursday, the truck's sitting outside. And I'm like, yeah, the truck's, I sort of talk to the driver. I go, you're delivering today. You got our special order. He goes, no, I'm not delivering to you. And he throws up a couple of names. He goes, I'm delivering to these brand new accounts. And I said, you have new accounts? He goes, yeah, I have new accounts. I was like, that's weird because I called and tried to get a special delivery on Thursday. They told me, no way. There's no way we can get anything on Thursday. You're not even here on Thursday. He goes, no, I'm op they're opening up brand new accounts. Um, and this is part of the problem. Bread alone is opening up new accounts. People like us that have been with them for 18 years that have gotten two deliveries a week for 18 years consistently and have spent who knows how much money with them. They're actually going in and opening up farm stands and other places and new accounts that is now 
looking back on us, they, even, they went and even went into a distributor in New York City and started fulfilling orders in a distributor in New York City because Tomcat in New York City is closed. And once Tomcat reopens, Tomcat's probably gonna go back into this distributor and gain part of its business back, and then all of a sudden, bread alone is gonna be like, well, now we stretched ourselves too thin. Now, the current customers that you've had for 18 years, like me, you've pissed off, and I might have found another bakery. We're gonna look into Hawthorne Valley, but a lot of bakeries are in the same situation. There's just a lot of people who want high-quality bread. We're gonna try Hawthorne Valley and see what happens with that. Um, and, and try to go forward with that because bread alone just can't get us a product and they're more concerned about opening up new accounts and not fulfilling their accounts of us like they're 18 years old. So it's really a sad situation. Um, um, not the way to do business, by the way. Not the way to do business at all. Open up new accounts and not fulfill your, your long time standing customers. Your, um, not, not the proper way to do business. So hopefully bread alone will, and you know, we're being very patient because we understand that this is a really rough time for a lot of us and it's hard to get people to work and it's hard to keep up with work and and when you're a bread company like that you do you do have you do have um, a lot more orders but if you have a lot more orders don't open up new accounts where you screw out your old accounts so um, we're really not happy with bread alone right now they're, they're not they're not on our good list so um, hopefully they can redeem themselves and you talk to somebody and they just they just brush it off like oh well too bad um, so I'm not sure if the sit, I'm not sure if the salespeople are actually getting commissions on new accounts and thinking by opening up new accounts that 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 they're going to put money into their pockets and get. I'm not, I'm not sure if they're working on sales. I have no idea on commission. I have no idea. But that'll just be a theory. Okay, if a salesperson, I'm going to go in and open up these farm stands. I'm going to go open up these. I'm going to go open these new accounts, and I'm going to get more money. But then in turn, somebody like me is going to find another bakery. And if Tomcat was open, I would be buying. I would have switched to Tomcat already. Um, would have totally switched to Tomcat. Um, but Tomcat's not open, and I can't couldn't get any of their bread anyway. If I wanted their bread, because I just had a conversation with Tomcat beginning of beginning of no uh, March. I actually sat down with the sales manager had a conversation face to face with the sales manager from Tomcat, saying, you know, and he's like, no, we can get you this, we can get you this, and the whole thing happens. So Patrice is saying and supporting local shame on them. Um, you know, we really are bummed out with Bread Alone right now. We really are bummed out with them. 18 years of doing business with them, and they're opening up new accounts to basically not fulfill their old accounts. So I'm, I'm really upset with them too right now. So um, folks, that's it. I gotta get going. United Natural Foods is outside there. We got a bunch of more organic stuff coming in, a bunch of really cool stuff. The granola that I talked about yesterday is on that delivery truck. Um, no refined sugars in that granola. Really an awesome granola brand. We'll have that on our list very soon. Um, come get your avocados. Come get your tuna today. Tuna Tuesday, 19.99 tuna entrees. Um, Jamaican jerk, chicken, 9.99. And I have more of that smoked strip steak mac and cheese. I have like enough for 12 or so orders that left. So that is here, um, $9.99 tonight. The cool thing was last night, people called and goes, I'll take all of your specials. We had three $9.99 specials. Like, I'll take them all. And I was like, that's such a great idea. And hopefully people tonight will do the same thing. I'll take all three specials. Two of them are $9.99, one is $19.99. And I still have, I still have six four packs of the Bail Me Out IPA. Six four packs, that's it and it's gone. Um, so come down and grab some of that. And if that sells out, of course, we'll get some more stuff. Beers on tap are half price, of course, um, until they're gone. That's it. We won't really be tapping anything new, although we have something up our sleeves here and there. And we're going to narrow that way, way down. Um, and we've been kicking some kegs like crazy, so we don't have many selections left. But that's also half off. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Everybody have a fantastic day. Get outside and enjoy the sun, especially if you're in this area. It's in the mid-60s right now. Go get some sun. Go breathe some fresh air and enjoy. Um, Allison, and a total of 26 avocados. Um, perfect, Allison. Sold, 26 avocados. That sounds great. Um, I know. You know, the, the great thing about selling groceries, folks, is I know whose house I should go to for dinner. I know who's making guacamole. I know who's making lobster tails. I know who's cooking salmon. I know who's making risotto. This is great, folks. Um, I, I, it's really nice to know which ones of you out there are, are, are great cooks. Um, so uh, maybe any of you are interested in jobs coming here in the future or inviting me, over, me and Jamie over for dinner. Um, both of those are options. So enjoy, everybody. We'll talk to you later.